You are watching With a Cup of Tea, the High Plains Book Awards edition, a production of This House of Books, an independent bookstore cooperative and tea shop in downtown Billings, Montana. Now here's our show. Welcome to This House of Books. We have with us uh, High Plains Book Fest finalist, Stephanie Anderson. She has her debut nonfiction book, One Size Fits None, a girl's search for the promise of regenerative agriculture. So let's talk about the book in a minute. Uh, in the meantime, Stephanie, let's hear a little bit about you. Tell us about yourself. Sure, absolutely. Um, so as the title implies, I am a farm girl. I grew up on my parents' ranch in Western South Dakota. And, uh, you know, when I grew up there, I was, I was a participant in farm life in, in every way that I could possibly be. Um, you know, whether it's out in the pasture, helping to herd cattle, or you know, working in the hay field, that type of thing. And I just, I just really enjoyed that life. And I uh, went to college in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I went to Augustana University and uh, I majored in English and creative writing. So I always knew that I wanted to, to be a writer. And I worked briefly at a newspaper in Sioux Falls, a farm newspaper called Tri-State Neighbor. So I kind of merged my love for writing and farming there for about a year. And then I went to get my MFA in uh, Florida, in Boca Raton, Florida, at Florida Atlantic University. And uh, yeah, so then I had to write a thesis and I knew that I wanted to focus that thesis on agriculture and, and farming and storytelling um, in that way. Okay, is this book an outgrowth of your thesis? Yes, it is. Yep, it is an outgrowth of the thesis. Um, a much, a much pared down version of the thesis. The thesis was actually a bit longer, so it's a much more focused and a lot leaner version. Um, but I, you know, my major is in creative nonfiction, so um, you know that was that was a way for me to merge my love of you know journalism and and personal essay writing, and then also research. Okay, and then it was uh, apparently a very good thesis because it was picked up by the University <laughs> of Nebraska. So. Uh, you know, one of the a really terrific publisher. So, uh, but you grew up in South Dakota. Could I, could I ask where? Yeah, absolutely. So I grew up outside of Bison, South Dakota. So that's the Northwest corner of the state. Um, it's about two and a half hours North of, uh, of, the, of the Black Hills. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, people, people around here will know it. So. <laughs> yeah, of course. Okay. I've, I've, I've seen a lot of your, uh, you know, a lot of your work is out in uh, uh, magazines and journals and so right. on. Uh, and this is your first book? It is. Yep, this is my first book. So that was a, it's a really exciting and one of those firsts that you always hope for as a writer and you're not sure if it's going to happen. So just to have it, just to have that be out in the world and to have had it do, you know, do much better than I expected uh, is is great. So I'm I'm definitely definitely happy well, with it. Tell us about the book. Um, you know I'm I'm interested in this uh, idea of regenerative agriculture um, as opposed to sustainable agriculture. Those are different. Yeah. Um, you know. So when we when I was kind of thinking about how to shape this book and what I wanted to write about, I knew that. I was starting from the point of knowing that there was something I felt wrong with the, with agriculture currently, that there was something broken about the industrial system. And so as I looked deeper into that question of what a better system might look like, um, I immediately came to sustainability, right? Sustainable agriculture, agriculture that, um, you know, maybe replenishes the resources that it takes versus always extracting. And uh, the more I read and the more I started talking to people like Gabe Brown, who's in the book, um, and all the people, the word regenerative started to come up a lot more. And so as of when we, we think about that in, in relationship to sustainable, it's not that they're diametrically uh, opposed, so to speak. It's that they, regenerative just takes that idea a step further. It, it, instead of just maintaining resource levels, we will build back more soil carbon than we had um, before, that we will um, not just kind of maintain water use and be conser you know, uh, practice conservation, but we will actually help make those resources cleaner, better, um, you know, and more available. And, and, and so it, it does that in a number of areas. That's just the beginning with soil and water. Um, so it's, it's really taking a more holistic approach and I think sustainability really captures. Um, and so regenerative means regenerative, not just for the land, um, but also for the people and also for the rural communities. And so that's what I really liked about that term. Yeah, I was just curious though, I, I'm, I had a, um, 
a botanist I worked with. He was a BLM botanist and, mm -hmm. and um, he, um, the savory method was one that came out, you know, yep. uh, during his time. Uh, and it was, you know, people showed a lot of interest, but he kind of jokingly referred to it as the, um, the ranching made difficult method, you know, the RMD method. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I'm kind of wondering if that's, uh, do you get that objection to, to in feedback to your book? Sure. I mean, the, the whole um, premise or one of the, or I, the, the reason that industrial agriculture, or one reason, I guess, um, that it was sort of sold to farmers and ranchers, that it would make things easier. Um, you know, that, that you can bring a chemical off the shelf to solve your weed problems. You can, um, you know, treat your cattle with an insecticide and it will solve your insect problem or your um, parasite problems, whatever. Um, and so, yeah, it, in a world in which ranching is supposed to be easy, made, made easy through technology, it may seem like a lot of work to have to rotate the cattle once a day or every couple of days, um, you know, if we're kind of working from that example. Um, and so I think that when I, the farmers I talked to and the ranchers I talked to said, it's a different kind of work. Um, you know, I mean, do you want to spend your day, you know, in the tractor 12 hours a day putting up hay, or do you want to spend a little bit more time managing your cattle so that your grass lasts longer so you don't have to do that? So it, it's kind of, uh, you know, at least Gabe Brown, he said, you know, what I, that, the work that I do um, is a lot more rewarding and it, you know, it's sort of tasks that farmers feel like they shouldn't have to be doing, but that's what farming is more about than, you know, sort of, yeah, reaching for those easier methods. So he finds that more like intellectually and emotionally fulfilling and also like um, just a different kind of work that's not quite so monotonous, I guess. Yeah. One, one other question I might just ask is, um, how, how did you do the research for this book? Ah, that's a great question. Um, so I, I mean, I love research. I'm sort of a research nerd um, when it comes to that portion. But, um, you know, I very much started by trying to immerse myself as much as possible in the literature surrounding regenerative and sustainable and organic and, um, and kind of the conversations that were already happening whether it was, um, you know, the data or um, you know, other versions of the kind of the storytelling aspect as well. And then I knew that I just needed to get out and see it. So once I felt comfortable with the subject, um, you know, that was because it was going way different, you know, way, it was way different than the kind of farming ranching I grew up with. I grew up on a very conventional industrial operation. So a lot of these concepts were new to me. So once I felt like I had um, some familiarity with them, I actually needed to get out into the field, literally and <laughs> figuratively speaking. Uh, so I found people that were willing to talk to me, willing to take me around. Um, and so then I was able to kind of link those concepts with actual um, evidence on the ground and, um, and then of course base it in story because I didn't want to just write a book of, of facts and information. I wanted it to be engaging and compelling and, and driven by story. Um, not only by the subjects, but also some of my personal story as well. So it's a combination of, um, you know, sort of the quote unquote library research, but all, and then also um, in-person interviews and, um, you know, days spent out with the subjects and then also just drawing on my personal experiences as well. So you've talked to people who are doing this and they're making it work. Yeah, absolutely. So the book follows the stories of four different uh, farmers and ranchers from across the United States who are farming regeneratively in a variety of sizes. So the title One Size Fits None is drawn from the fact that on the far end of the spectrum, we have this um, kind of larger ranch um, in South Dakota, uh, who's a man named Phil Jurdy, who's raising buffalo in a regenerative fashion, um, drawing in part from the savory method. And, and then we all go down to the other side of the spectrum of a man in New Mexico who is doing regenerative agriculture in greenhouses in his backyard and supplying that to, um, the local Albuquerque food system, um, specifically for the, for kids in their school system. So it's a one size fits none. It's like kind of a way of thinking that can apply to them wherever you are on the agricultural scale. Um, yeah, so that's kind of where that comes from. Let me, let me ask who would be the audience for this book? Oh, I really love that question because the easy answer to would be, you know, people who are already interested in food and the environment and all of that. So I was actually writing from the perspective of um, or, or writing toward the viewpoint or to the, um, for, for writing for someone who may not uh, be at that point yet, um, who may be 
uh, not sure about whether industrial agriculture is broken or not, or um, who may not understand the consequences um, yet of like a, a, a warming world on agriculture, um, or who even someone who may not be interested in food at all, who may not realize that uh, so, you know, the importance of soil and may not care. Um, so I would actually say that this book is for the person um, who doesn't know that they're interested in those things yet, or who may, um, you know, I guess to put it on the, in perspective of, uh, on the other side of the issue, I guess, or on the other side, this is not a preaching to the choir book by any means, I didn't want it to be. Um, so if you're involved in industrial agriculture in any form, um, I would like you to read it. If you are um, maybe not sure how climate change impacts your food system in your life, take a look. That, that's the person I want to read this book. If anyone's interested in, uh, you know, hearing more about the book or any of my other writing or, or just following me on social media, um, you can do that at, at www.stephanieandersonwriting.com or on Facebook or Instagram at, at Stephanie Anderson Writing. Um, and so I'd love to communicate with anybody via social media or, or um, online as well. So thank you so much for listening and for having me on. Well, thanks so much. And we'll, we'll make sure that we have the, uh, those addresses uh, at the end so awesome. people can pick them up. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up here and uh, take off. Hey, best of luck to you. And we hope to see you around. This program has been produced by This House of Books in collaboration with the High Plains Book Awards. The Book Awards were established to recognize regional authors and literary work that examines life on the High Plains. Nominations will be accepted starting in January 2021 on the website highplainsbookawards.org.